Hunter Hookup Podcast, episode 466. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan. Today we're going to talk about the foundations from foundations. Now hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What is going down? I was fixing my sleeves. Whole ton is going down. We're back for a new week, but on the same day from two weeks ago, because we always like to record from the past into the future, making this back to the future-ish. We are doing the thing. And we are going to explain the quantum mechanics of all of that. Before we get to any of that kind of stuff, we have to talk about our... Fucking business daddy. There you go. You got FusionGamingOnline.com. The resource for all your gaming needs. And we also have to send a big thank you out to Pile of Bones Brewing Co. They're the second coolest thing to come out of Regina. And they are also the official beer sponsor for CCO Sidewalk Slam oh, you didn't even Season know. 2. Right here on YouTube. <laughs> <sighs> That's it. That's it. Oh. And I do have to say this. Okay. So, you know that Quark beer, the one that's sitting in front of me. You'd see it if you're watching on YouTube. Which it should be. Keel sends me a text, our good oh, friend Keel. Love that guy. He says, he goes, fuck me. Thanks for nothing, or thanks a lot, or whatever he said. Oh. Quark beer, so good. He goes, now i got to buy a whole bunch of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's the point. Yeah, what a, that's why they gave it to us to sit here so we could talk yeah, about it. What a great problem to have, hey? What a great problem to have, drinking Man. delicious beer from yeah. our friends at Pile of Bones Brewing Co., uh, award-winning beer best craft beer in canada so if you're in the surrounding area try some quark it is award-winning it is quite good the best thing to come out of regina you say uh keel's really good man i don't he's know a, yeah, he's, he's a good good. guy he's, he's a good, good dude he's pretty good okay uh big thanks to the business daddies yep. cco holiday new code in effect as of last week get your holiday shopping done in one spot D&D, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, Sealed, Singles. Board sp- games, play sleeves. mats, boxes, fucking. They got it. Yeah, all. everything Dice. that they sell at the store. Just go in and look at it all and then order it at the counter on your phone. Make people wait behind you oh, yeah, while you're too. shopping. That and works. Then- that works. Pick up in store and then just look impatiently at the poor guy behind the counter. <laughs> like, where's my shit? I would not recommend you do that, but I would recommend you go to FusionGamingOnline.com. I have and definitely done that at our local game store, where it's like, I'll, ordered online. I'll ask Aaron if he has a card, and he'll look, and he'll find it, and then I'll wait until he goes and does something else while I'm playing, and then I'll order it real quick, and I'll ask him if he can go get it for me. <laughs> Only Uncle Brando, yeah. everybody. And then he'll wait for like a long time, and then wait until we're playing the game, and then he'll come by and like throw it down in front of me. Here's your stupid card. Here's your stupid card. Yeah, it's take it. Good. Get out of my life, but not really. Yeah, take it and leave, and then come back. Yes. Later on, spend more money. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And final big thanks goes out to producer Gray Merchant of Asphodel in the tooth booth right well, that, over there. That's Gary. That's yeah, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if Gary would have got that, but you let the cat out of the bag. Well, he, we got to set him up. We got to set him up for success. Yes, we, we do want to set him up for success, and mm-hmm. uh, we'll bring him a Gary card. I yeah. Think, I think we got to do that, but uh, I don't have one on me, so. Yeah, I don't have um, one Big thanks to everybody who came out to the CCO experience in Calgary. It was a great time. Yep. That is um, theoretically happened already. Uh, Big thanks to all of the Patreon supporters that helped make that possible. Um, Patreon.com slash CCO podcast. If you'd like to join in that, get the Discord, get all the benefits, get invited to future CCO experiences that we're going to hopefully be doing in the coming year. Uh, and a little support goes a very long way, and we appreciate it very much. Very much so. And I'm going to throw this one out there just just to pressure people into um, oh, shit. probably what will end up being reimbursements now. Big thanks to everybody who went to coffee.com slash commander cookout. Stop, stop doing that. There's stop. a. The... I know that, but don't just ignore it. It'll go away. Ooh, to hate bugs. Big thank you to everybody who went out to coffee.com slash commander cookout and donated there to buy your good friend, whoever was at the CCO experience, a beer. Yes. Yes, that is what that goes to. And uh, usually the day of at the experience, people are like, how do I how do I buy everybody a beer? Because I can't buy can't buy a beer like at the venue that like this yeah. one that we're at. I say, well, go to go to coffee and you can just do like a one time donation of like. Yeah. 10 bucks or go to commandercooko.com. You can do it through PayPal there too. It's probably a little bit quicker because yeah. you know, PayPal keeps you logged in on your phone. Yeah. And uh, you can say, uh, leave a little message. Hey, I want to buy Keel a beer. Hey, I want to buy Rusty Trom Jones a beer. Yep. Hey, I want to buy uh, the goons and, and uh, what did we call them last week? The greater goons? The greater goons, the goon squad. 
the uh, the Goondock the Saints. CCO Goondock Saints. There we go. Uh, we want to buy them a beer. You can make a little donation, and we very much appreciate that. Have you ever seen the Boondock Saints? Oh yeah. Okay. You've yeah, I bought it from you. Saints. Oh, really? I bought it from you. Oh, look at that! Yep. Man, that's yeah, yeah. freaking cool. Yep. Okay, so that's lots of fun. Um, CCO holiday promo code. I know I mentioned that, but uh, coming up on the CCO store. Yes. In the coming weeks, now that it's the week after Calgary, theoretically. Okay. Uh, stuff is going to be going on sale. I'm going to be posting that up on social medias and in the Discord and on the Patreon, and uh, I'll I'll repost to the patrons all of like the discount codes that they get uh, for the store as part of their support. So go there, create some room in my office so my wife doesn't get mad when merch spills out into the house. Yeah. And we can uh, we can out with the old and in with the new to match the style of our Plinko board. Yes. Which I assume was a great success in Calgary. Everybody probably loved it. Yes, and we gave away lots of prizes courtesy of CCO. Yes. And, and face-to-face games. Also and correct. maybe Fusion if we swindle them into giving out some prizes. Oh, we tricked them for sure. We're really oh, smart. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're yeah. really good at that. Yeah. Sometimes they come over and just say, hey, hey, here's some booster packs to give out. Yeah, but other times we trick them into giving us booster mm-hmm. packs. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, so foundations today before we get to foundations Uh i forgot to do this on the pre-show last week and the show last week so i'm going to do it now oh remember when i tried to convince everybody to watch bot boy and it was not as successful as i was hoping yes i'm going to try one more time i have a new movie i think everybody should see i'm going to do it real fast real fast cinema cookout podcast right near the movie is called benny loves you oh and it's about a toy designer who wants to move forward in his career because he's dissatisfied with his life so he gets one of those self-motivational cds and it's like you're a loser you need to discount oh. to discard all your childish things to do better in the business world and the guy's like well okay so he throws away all of his stuff and one of the things he discards is his little stuffed animal friend he was a kid named benny benny the stuffed animal does not appreciate that very much is it a haunted toy it sure is oh, no. and he comes back to life and he is pissed off and it's very it's very well done and super funny I'm sure it's very well done. It, I'm it, sure it, it is. It actually is. They don't try to do anything that they can't do. And like, you can tell that Benny is just like, kind of like being dangled and just <laughs> shaken. It's really, really good. And he's got a knife. And there's one part where he does the big gear up, like in the action movies. And he gets all of his ninja weapons and stuff. And he With goes the fast zoom zoom ins, like oh, the yeah. Tarantino zoom ins. Where he clicks and all the, the <laughs> things. Oh, yeah. It's super good. And I think lots of people would enjoy it. So if you're looking oh, for bad. something to do for 93 minutes, check out Benny Loves You. Oh, great. Yeah. Hey. I, I see the banner for Commander History up behind us in the in the set TV. Oh yeah, I'm sitting down with Kelly from Face to Face Games to do a chat. What I mean is, I already did that. Mm-hmm. A chat about uh, kind of the history of of the Pro Tour and then history of the Canadian Magic Tour and scene oh. in in Canada, like how it evolved from piece of trivia, the first Pro Tour. Sorry, the first ever, 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 ever pre-release mm-hmm. was in Canada. Really? Apparently. That's neat. I don't know the story yet. And it evolved from that through the pre-release days, like the mega huge pre-releases. Yeah. And then like the Pro Tour, the Canadian kind of tour to ch- like funnel people up to um, how, yes, how, how it works now, right? Yeah. And uh, we're going to sit down and talk about that. It's going to be on Commander History. So look forward to that. It's coming out. That'd be cool. Yeah, as long as I did have time to sit down with him, because he's, he's very a very busy, busy guy. man. Yeah. Very busy man on the weekends that uh, we run a show. Will he have his hat? Oh, always. He didn't have his hat last time, because he left it somewhere. Oh. He had to get it mailed back to him, remember? Yeah, well, he has it now. That was a whole travesty. That it was, was a whole thing. it was, because his grandpa gave him that hat. Yeah, it was a yeah, nice hat. It's a whole it thing. It's, it. That's part of Canadian magic history. Yeah, man. It's, a Canadian it's a magic a trivia. Hat. Yeah. Yeah. So, we are talking about foundations today. Okay. And there was a couple things that we wanted to cover kind of kind of top down and, and make sure that they jive or that they're consistent with sort of what we expect and are they cool and all that stuff. Yes. So where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? I feel like there's only one way to decide that, Ryan. Ugh. Yeah, like we have to, because I want to start, I would like to start on the new foiling process. Okay. That is the mana foil. That's where I would like to start. I would like to start with some of the most expensive cards in the set, because I think that those are going to be high impact cards for the format. Okay. Only one way to decide, you say? Only one way to decide. Whip out our dinkos and decide whose is 
Well, I would win that. So I guess we just start on the mana foiling. Excellent. Oh, no, no, no. I meant Plinko, not oh. Dinko. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, Plinko. that's cool. Yes, okay. Plinko. Okay. Whew, did I say the wrong word? Yes. <laughs> For the audio listeners, we've got the Plinko board, and producer Gary is deciding where to go. First one to land in the middle. Not first one to land in the middle, closest oh! to the middle. Oh, that's <laughs> shit. Ryan. It Did can't you? be first. Okay, well, if you can match my if you can match my play. Yeah, if I match the middle, then I Doesn't look promising. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so since I'm on top, let's start with the foiling process. Oh no, but I'm on power bottom. In well, this case. But I'm on top. So, we're going to start with the foiling process. Mana foil fantastic cards baby okay you've seen them in person i have seen them in person and they're they're very reminiscent of the remember the from the vaults from back in the day yes it's very reminiscent of that but without the thick plasticky feeling that those cards had mm, and if you i if like thick plastic and if you've experienced those cards you know what i'm talking they almost yes. don't even feel like a magic card right correct these ones like the the actual um physical touch of the surface of them yeah. is very smooth yeah but yes. these ones are certain especially not that because they're also textured foils Ooh. so which they, what what did you open like that uh the, Man or elf nope no nope. it was the new uh door of destinies whatever that's called some kindred banner or whatever it is uh, something like that something like that it's i'll look it up you it's a really going. it's a really really good card anyway and so they're they're bright it actually accentuates the art the foiling does and mm -hmm. the texture is it doesn't mean anything it's kind of wasted i think on cards because yeah you, it's a way for them to yeah. say hey this isn't the next rarest version banner of kinship is that's, what it is that's do you want to talk about that card yes it's okay. a very very good card because okay. i door of destinies cut it cut it cut it that's a good card though Banner of Kinship. Okay. Better. It's an artifact for five. When it enters, choose a creature type. It enters with a fellowship counter on it for each creature of the chosen type. Mm -hmm. Then creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one for each counter on it. So Door of Destinies oh. would... It encourages you to play it first. Yes. Then play Slivers afterwards. Yes. And, and it they get costs bigger. five. I think it costs four. Okay, sure. This one costs five, but it rewards you for already having done the thing. I've already played a bunch of goblins. I've already played a bunch of elves. I've already done my token swarm business. Now the banner of kinship comes in. Boom. Now it's hugely impactful and maybe even a finisher. And yeah. if all your dudes get wiped out, you're not spending all your time trying to build it up, build it up, build it up. You yes. already got something good. You've invested something and it's working for you right away. What I don't like about this, this is this was this will be the modern criticism of this card. Okay. I don't like how this encourages me to play my one drop and my two drop and then my three drop and then two two drops and then a two drop and a three drop yeah. and then my banner of kinship. And just blow somebody because up. Because I have not played any five drop, six drop, seven drop, haymaker, battle cruiser, a la classic commander except for the banner of kinship except for the banner of kinship this makes this rewards me for building decks the modern style that commander decks are mm. built in and i like cards that encourage the old school commander style from 10 years ago you want to you want to guess what i'm going to do with it no nope. i'm going to okay you're going to tell me hypothetically put it into a deck where not only is it going to make all my creatures really big and hit way harder, yeah. it's also going to be a 4-4 four, four with haste and indestructible. It's going to draw <laughs> me a card when it hits you. That's what I'm going to do with uh, it. Yes. Yes, that's good. So Banner of Kinship, good card. Good. And you have a mana foil. A mana foil of it. And, and, I'm, and it's got the mana pips like the step and complete foils? I don't think so. I mean, I held it up to the lights and looked it all around and stuff, but I didn't notice anything. So maybe I got like a faulty one. I don't know. But I don't see any of that overlay business going okay. on. But they're really, really, really cool. And if you get one or know somebody that has them, just take a look yep. at them. Because, again, they're just really neat game pieces and really cool, like, collectible yeah. things. And if you open one, they do, at least at time of recording, they still maintain a fairly decent value to them as well. Like, well, even like the, the step and complete foils. Precisely. Or, or the textured foil... Like Eldrazi or, or Legends from Mari Ho Ho and Mari yes. Ho Ho and Mari Ho and just Ho. Possibly. And just Mari Ho. But and unlike the gilded foils from Streets of Capanna, because those aren't worth shit. Ah, mm -hmm. yes. Well, let's, uh, let's stay on the premium versions of product kind of line and talk about the borderless cards. We mentioned them last week. Yes. And I had said that the art style or the card choice 
or maybe just the actual pieces of art, because the style is kind of the same across each year when they do this, yep. the actual pieces of borderless art that they did are really good. I love the Exemplar of Light, the Giada Font of Hope, and the Herald of Eternal Dawn. Those three angels, very nice. Very cool. Color scheme right on point with Crystal Barricade, which is a new card that yep. gives you hexproof for two mana only. Back in my day in masks, you had to pay five for that. <laughs> yeah. I love the long-legged Salvador Dali style Eldrazi in Sire of Seven Deaths. Man, everybody's up on that card. Hey, and seven seven for seven with seven abilities. One yeah. of which is Ward Seven. Yes, I the the card is fine. It's a big high mana, high impact Eldrazi. It's just another in the long line of that style of mm. card. Again, Haymakers, uh, Battle Cruiser, big mana magic encourages me to play powerful removal. That's what Commander also is, yep. right? And I appreciate that. But I like the art on this one because it does look like a Salvador Dali piece. It certainly does. And I've got a Dali like hanging downstairs in my basement. You do. Like I got a framed print. Actually, it's in the bathroom. So It's in the basement still. Celestial Armor. That's another one. I really like these. And these in foil always look good. Yes. I haven't seen a single one of these that are bad. I really like Humunculus Swarm, which is a card that I like as well. Oh, or Humunculus man. Horde, sorry. I might play this card in, in Calamax. I might play, but that's community built, so I got to get a recommendation from somebody somebody in the nation. That isn't me. Yeah. Because I a, would just recommend it. 2-2 two, two homunculus for blue and three. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a token that's a copy of this creature. It's kind of like Scoot Swarm, but in blue. And, and instead of for playing land, right? Yeah. It's for casting your second spell each turn. Drawing and, your second card each turn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Drawing your second card each turn. And I love that I, like in Calamax, I can play an instant on my turn that draws me a card. Yep. Copy this. And then I play like a Brainstorm that I copy on your turn. Yep. Calamax will copy it, and then I'll get like another one or yep. two more because they, yeah, oh yeah. man, this card is freaking cool. It's a really cool card. Yeah. This card is very cool. And it makes up for the fact, first criticism of the set, I'm going to level at it. I don't think there's a clone this year. Oh, well, this guy clones himself. He clones himself, and he costs the clone mana, but there's no clone. I thought that Spark Double would have been a really good addition to mm, the set, you mm -hmm. know? Because that's an expensive reprint, and, like, what kind of core set doesn't have clone in it? Yeah. Really? And I, I, like, I like Spark Double as a good hit because we have so many legends in jumpstart packs that mm -hmm. new players are going to be building decks around like we talked about last week yeah you clone your commander thinking oh i'm smart now i'm gonna have two commanders then you learn the legend rule yeah <laughs> it's like uh, actually sorry you can't do that but with spark double it says right on it that you can yeah yeah i like that that would be a good include for this set but like, it ain't yeah it's not other there. other good reprints were like omniscience and um what else do we got here uh cool art on heroes downfall now those are neat are we yeah. do we want to talk about blasphemous Blasphemous? Blasphemous Butthole Edict? Yes, yeah. we do. Look at the art on this one, hey? It's pretty, it's like a, it looks like a fucking Renaissance painting. It's so cool. And like the Reaper's got the walking drum. The, is that a bass drum? Is that what you call those ones? The one would, that you wear on your chest? I would call that a bass drum, yeah. And the, oh, yeah, that's cool. It's a, It costs black, Ooh. and everybody sacks 13 dudes. Oh, so good. That's pretty good. So good, This yeah. ain't your mama's Blasphemous Act. This ain't your mama's oh. ass. Don't don't Google that. This ain't your, your mama's ass blaster. No, your mama's blasphemous act. Don't. <laughs> your mama's blasphemous ass. Can you imagine if you said my mother's blasphemous act and a picture of you popped up? Oh no. Can you imagine that? That would be just heartbreaking. Oh, no. no, I think it would be more heartbreaking if your mom popped up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. Okay. What do we got here? Red cards. We got a braid reprint. We got another cool picture of Kellen. Kellen can off. I know. Stop trying to make Kellen happen. Kellen is never going to happen. This is a stupid card. Kellen is not fetch. Fetch is not a thing. Kellen I just, I like that art. It it really reminds me of like the 60s movie poster, like action cowboy shot. I don't like the card and the card's not for EDH, but I like that art and I like that style. Once we have turned Niv Mizzet into Niv Mizzet's head on a stick, Kellen's next. Sure. Mark my words. Sure. Also the Atali Primal Storm. Really cool new art, I think. He looks a, just a little bit ridiculous. He looks a his, little bit like he like, visited cocaine, right? Like the wrestler. His, yes, like his face is just a little bit like he 
hung out with Thomas the Train and maybe rode some rails. You know what I'm saying? A little bit. But a little bit he I, does. I just like that. That's a cool one. A little bit he does. But look at that electro duplicate. That is a cool piece like, of art. There's man. so much just art that's good. And we're talking about is this like this a new card electro duplicate? No, I don't think so. Oh, think this okay. Let's let's read what it does. This, this is a sorcery for red two. This is your clone. And it's a red one. Ooh. Roan. Red clone. Sure. Okay. Create a copy that's a Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control, except it has haste. And at the beginning uh, of your end step, you sacrifice it. And this has flashback for red, red, two. This is a good card. So it could be 11th and 12th, seven dwarves. There you go. And it is new in it Foundations. It is a new card. Okay, I'll have to see if I can grab me one of them. Because that's yeah. going to be a good ass Gra card. Grab this art, too. This yes. art in foil is going to slap. It's going to be very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's another card I actually kind of wanted to talk about with Spear Splicer Goblin. Oh, yeah. It's a 2 1 for 1 with Raid at the beginning of your end step. If you attacked this turn, you get a 1 1 Goblin. Obvious why I want it. Mm -hmm. It's very clear, but that's a just, it's a good, solid Goblin card. Yeah, and you know what? You know what I, I'm, I'm starting to realize about these full art or these widescreen cards? They rule is they picked cards that, A, are new ones in the set that they know are going to be good, that people are going to like. Right. Which, which is what they always do. Which is smart. They also gave us commander staples yep. in this art treatment because this art treatment is more expensive, yep. and we are the ones that want the special Galtas and Atalis and Omnisciences. Omnisci? Omnisciences. Yes. We are the ones that want these. A new player... I don't give a shit. Might not care about this as much. Or if they do get one of these, it'll be like the pride of their collection type card, right? Like, yeah. oh, I got this thing. Uh, look at this foil, right? But if they don't care, yeah. they can go back to their game store and say, hey, I got this. It's worth more money. Trade it in. Turn it into more magic cards. At that yes. point, free magic cards. You mm. already got the excitement and and you already got to open the packs and play the cards. Now, that and that's what you spent the money on? Now you take your more expensive card back, trade it in, get more stuff. Very right? important. And yeah. I want to talk about one more of those just real fast because I'm so excited to see Genesis Wave mm. have a borderless card. Anybody who's played Magic with me for a long time mm -hmm. knows that Genesis Wave is by far and away my very favorite win condition. Mm -hmm. I love going Gen Wave for 13 and then da 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 And one of those things put the Genesis Wave back in my hand. And the rest of the things that I got lets me Genesis Wave for even more again. Yeah. I freaking love that. And I'm so excited to see that. I'm going to grab me a Halo foil of that as soon as I can find one. Yeah, man. There's so many of these widescreen cards that I want to talk about. Some new, some reprints. Let's talk about preposterous proportions <laughs> with the freaking lemurs on it. <laughs> Creatures you control get plus 10, plus 10. And because they needed it, gain vigilance until end of turn. Um... Vigilance is great because I can alpha, and if you don't, if you don't, don't die. die, because they don't have trample. Mm -hmm. Now I don't die on the crackback, right? So like I get, I get why it's vigilance. Trample would just wreck this card, I think, because it would be an instant win con like Crater Hoof. Yes, it's a seven mana Crater Hoof that I can't tutor for with my uh, worldly tutor, right? Well, I mean, it's it, this this card's going to win way fewer games than Crater Hoof. Way fewer. Yes. Yes. And I think it wins fewer games than people think it will yeah. until they understand how to play it. And again, this is this a little bit feels like just a, just a little sprinkle, just a little salt bay of trap for new players where it's like, plus 10, oh my God. Get in there. And then A, it's seven mana. And B, they're not going to find an opening where it's actually enables a win condition yeah. right it's unless like, you're probably already going to do it exactly like i've got my team of five guys and you tapped out to kill somebody else and you're like oh i can survive a turn yeah preposterous proportion is going to win me the game there right yes but if you got five blockers and i got five attackers and yours are guys that are like not guys you attack with yeah they're they're static just guys that provide you some benefit so you're not going to throw them away well, this card does nothing for me. Correct. Right? So. I mean, it might even cause you to take 20 from a Brash Taunter. Oof. Right? Oof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, I think that there was a commander I forgot to talk to you about that combos with Brash Taunter. Well, there's probably lots of commanders you forget to talk to me I about the combo with Brash I Taunter. I want to talk about 
Lateral Blade of the Elves. The uh, I'm not going to read it. doesn't matter. He's a reprint, yes? He's a reprint, but this one looks a little bit Renaissance-y. Yes, and I love that kind of high art, well, Renaissance style. Yes. I like that. I can imagine this being on like the wall of a chapel or like one of those huge 18-foot pieces that was done and it took like the artist like 10 years to paint because it's like so freaking huge right somewhere like in Prague or like the Vatican or something last night this this is actually relevant okay to what you're just saying last night I went to see heretic in the theater okay good show and he, there's a guy there's a character who's talking about different religious figures that resemble Jesus okay and he's got a bunch of pictures of him on the wall and if you look at the wall and you're looking at all the figures, there's like Horus and Allah and all these guys, right? Yeah, yeah. Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> just, that's, that's how you know it's an Uncle Brando movie. Right? right? Like, it's, he's just hidden in there and it's just, yeah. It's a, oh, man. Good show. Also came out. Oh, Very low go. key. For good, another good movie there from Brando. There you go. Good, uh, good piece of uh, the puzzle here. Yeah. I got one for you. Okay. Leyline Ass. <laughs> Gonna oh, say it. I, I was going to say it. Oh, you were... Leyline ass. Yeah, Leyline lay ass. So we know what it does. Yep. It starts the game in your opening hand in play. Correct. Right? If it's in your opening hand. Now, it's an equipment for four that equips for three. Mm -hmm. Seven mana all in if it doesn't start in play. And it gives equip creature plus one, plus one, double strike, and Trampski. Yikes. That is a cool card right there. And the foil... Of the widescreen borderless edition, 50 bucks. Hollow, hollow foils, yes. Oof. 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 Yeah. That's what we're saying. It's like, it's 430 or three bucks or whatever. And then it goes up to 50 if you want the mana foils. So. Yeah. And new players, parents with kids that are learning to play through foundations, trade that card back in because some whale like Uncle Brando wants to pay $50 for it. And you can trade this one card in for a whole nother pre-con. You can trade some of these cards in that have this crazy price tag for a whole nother booster box. And I promise you, you're what? You're 13 year old, you're yeah. eight, 10 year old. Way more interested in opening more packs, getting more cards and having one shiny thing. And I, I promise yes. you that's true. Uh, that that do, that will that relationship will shift eventually, yep. right? Eventually, so, I, I don't care about opening packs anymore. Yep. I know that you still do. I do, but you also care about shiny. Yeah, right? and See, I, so care I get more, the worst of both worlds. I want the pimp foil version of this leyline ass for Lord of Treasurehorn because mm -hmm. it 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 starts the game in play, and I can immediately kill somebody in one shot with Lord of Treasurehorn. Does right? the does the begin the game in play on this card mm -hmm. make it better than Ember Cleave? Ooh, because Ember Cleave is ba it does all the same shit. Yeah, but you have to pay at least two for it to have it come into play and then auto equip, right? So it ends up, you know, like yep. so. I and think... Ember Cleave in the same set. Oh yeah, they're that's both right. available in this set. I think Ember Cleave. That's a good comparison, actually, because um, they offer you some free or discounted way of doing the equipping thing. Yeah. And they offer the plus one trample, double strike. I think Ember Cleave wins more games than Leyline Axe because you don't see it coming. It's sneaky. I think paying red, red for it when you're attacking with four guys yep. is how you win games. Sneaky, sneak. And and the cost of not having it just be in play, like, is is just leave two red open and win the game. Like that, that's fine. I, I think Ember Cleave is better than this card, but. It makes it for a one-hit kill with my commander. That doesn't make this a bad card. No. For the no. record. <laughs> yeah, no, the, those things are, are uh, not mutually exclusive. They're no, both good cards. Not a, Five Planeswalkers in the set. Yeah. And then I want to talk about something that is missing from the set that confused me, and I think you might have an idea okay. as to why. So we got the five planes arcs with a Johnny Collar of the Pride. Yep. Cato Cunning Infiltrator. I think yep. that's a... Is that a new one or a reprint? Uh, probably a reprint. I think all these are reprints. Yep. Oh, no. No, he's new. He is new. Him and Chandra are both new. And then we've got Liliana, Dreadhorde General, new Chandra for seven. Nobody's ever going to play that anywhere. And OG Vivian Reed. Yeah. Are these... Did they pick good Planeswalkers to be in standard for five years? Or did they pick safe Planeswalkers that can be in standard for five years? Ooh. Uh, yes. They picked... Good reprints. I think Vivian saw play in Commander. 
Liliana Dreadhorde General is a fantastic that, commander that's card. That's a hell of a card. That's yeah. a good magic card in commander. Yep. And doesn't do a whole ton for standard because the deck kind of needs to be built around having that and it costs six. Yep. Um, Chandra, yeah, seven mana Chandra. Is anybody going to play that? No. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think all of these guys are fine. And I think that all of them are fine for commander too. And having talked, this is interesting. Maybe. I think it's interesting. <laughs> Having talked directly to Gavin Verhe, like lead product architect for Magic the Gathering, he said to me, he said, Planeswalkers are the face and not in these words, but how we sell Magic the Gathering because they are the character that people say, I like that guy. Right? Yeah. That's why Jace is so popular. Chandra, Li uh, Liliana, Vivian. That's why these characters are so popular because... The majority of Magic players exist between the ages of, according to Watsy, like 12 and 18. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're in the minority. What the fuck? And those players like characters and like story and like to build stuff around those kinds of characters that they can latch onto. Sure. Right? And identify with or whatever, whatever the case is. Sure. And I think that when you get a, a Kaito and a Vivian and a Chandra, I think that those are characters that they maybe want to exemplify. So you're telling me that some hormonal teenager is going to crack a pack. Yep. And they're just, they're raging balls of hormones. They're going to say... Raging this, balls, all right. This new Chandra, and they're going to say, man, I suck too. I'm going to play this <laughs> card. <laughs> yes. Is that what they're going to do? <laughs> yes, they... Yes. Uh, yep. uh, we, uh, should we read what she does? She's a seven mana Chandra, red, red five. She comes to play with six loyalty. Plus two, you get three red mana. You exile the top three cards of your library. You can play one of them. Plus okay, one. Okay, so she actually costs four if yeah. you plus her. If and you, you draw her. cards. And this, you, that's okay. And then you draw something that you can play for three. Then you can create a token that's a copy of target creature that you ditch at the end step for plus one. Minus four. She does eight damage divided as you choose among creatures and planeswalkers. I hate those, Chandra. Oh, no, you do it right away, though. Yeah. So she could be removal. Eight damage is freaking lots. Eight damage is lots. But again, we've had... This exact Chandra in Chandra Torch of Defiance, and she's better, but you mm. can't print her into because I I would argue that might be one of the most versatile planeswalkers ever printed. And versatility gives planeswalkers power. And you can't have that in standard for five years because she's uh, too dang good. Yeah, yeah. If they did uh, if they did Chandra in in standard for five years, they'd have to do Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yeah, and I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying that those two are equivalent in power at all, but I bet you that. One without the other, like Chandra without the Jace. I'll bet you the format would warp around Chandra quite Oh, yeah, quite it would be quickly. a different format, for sure. I, you know what? I like every one of the abilities printed on this card. If you read the I, card from the bottom to the top, it's great. And then you get to seven, you're like, yeah, fuck this. Yeah, I think, I think the numbers are wrong on this card. And obviously, I don't know what they know. I'm not part of the Future League. I'm not a card designer. But if this card costed five... Oh, and it yeah, gave you two yeah, red yeah. for like a plus one. Yeah. And like, look at the top two cards of your library. And then if you plus, if you plus one her to get a token, maybe if she started at four loyalty and you minus four her to deal eight and she dies, like it, it that, that all changes the cards. And those are the things that they tweak when they build planeswalkers, of course. Yeah. I think the numbers are wrong on this card in terms of its um, playability in yes. Commander. Correct. Yeah, but uh, let's talk. Uh, let's let's shift back. Let's sh let me shift back for a minute. Okay. I'm looking at Kaido. Okay. I see the regular one. Yep. I see the widescreen one. Yep. Cool. He's hanging off with like an energy chain. I see the, um, the regular one just sucks. What a... what the hell's the difference between these two widescreen ones? Ooh, there's the regular borderless one. Yes. And then there's the hollow foil or the mana foil borderless. One. Okay. Those have different card numbers. Okay. And then I see the one that has the sparkly confetti foil with no border. Those are kind of the anime -y ones. There's 10 or 12 of them in the set, ranging from mythic to common. And then I see the same art that is probably just a regular foil version of this. Yes. And have you seen all of these different versions of foil cards? Yes. I haven't seen a crackle foil from this set yet. Is that what it's I, called, crackle foil? That's what I call it. Okay. And I have seen one from the last one. And all of them are really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And 
I, I like to comment on this, mm -hmm. from the physical object that you own, the curling, in our area of the world at least, has been fairly minimal on them, mm -hmm. which, which is nice to, to see and know. Yeah. Because oh. nobody, I don't think anybody likes to order. The, oh man, you'll appreciate this. I bought one of those Lord of the Rings scene boxes a little while ago. Yes, and you know how they come packed, or everything's like smushed inside the little cardboard, inside the cardboard, inside yeah, the cardboard. Yeah. I pulled out the art cards. Get the f out of here. I pulled out the pack. Get the f out of here. I pulled out the little paper sleeve that I knew had the the cards that I wanted, the foils in it. Yeah, and I put it down on my table. It went. <laughs> it didn't even open it yet. <laughs> It's like, ah, oh, damn it. Yep, yep. I was going to say, uh, we might just be in the exact time of year yep. where it's just the right humidity to match the moisture percentage <laughs> in the cardstock yeah. so they don't warp. But when our humidity goes down to literal nothing and our lips are cracking, when yeah. it's minus 50 in January. My hands will turn into sandpaper. Yes, they'll curl one way. And then when, it, when we hit July and the humidity goes up to like... 95 they melt Ring, they'll curl the other way yep aren't we lucky to live here no oh well at least we're not down south in the land of the free yeah ooh, ooh, yeah okay. i hear it gets pretty muggy down there yeah that's definitely what i was thinking of too yeah uh, the, 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 kaito so the crackle foils you like these these are cool yeah, i think that they're neat either I, I want one if there's like a card that would go in norin but other than that it's not necessarily for me mm. but i've seen lots of people who have them that are fucking pumped for them. So I'm really glad that they're doing that because people obviously like it. Yeah. Something missing from the set that I'm con I'm confused by oh, man, that I want to get just your... Wait, look at these crackle... F Japanese showcases. That's what they're called. Yes. Man, look at the art on these. Wow. Muldrotha, Progi Tits. It's Progenitus for the uninformed. Yep. Doubling Season. Lanawar. Look Elf. at another Twin Flame Tyrant. That's so cool, man. Oh, think, these are freaking think cool. Twice. Like, what the fuck? Day of Judgment? Look at that. There's hardly any words on it. That's how magic cards should freaking come. You should just know what they do. Yeah, <laughs> know what they do, noob. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, you'll notice that there isn't a rare land cycle. Oh. That very much confused me. And now... Are you complain Are you specifically complaining no, about that? I am not. It's not a complaint. It's something that I'm, I'm genuinely... Mm -hmm. set a back by because usually they'll have something like this is the baseline for the rare cycle of lands now did they do that because they didn't want to like hamper design space in future sets or did they do it in order to encourage people to buy the newest shit because that's where all the best lands are oh optimist versus pessimist right we've been Correct. on that train for the last little while yes i think that because there are so many Lands that are tied to mechanics in sets, like look at the surveil lands in Murders at Karlov Manor. Right. And look at uh, scry lands in sets that care about scrying. Right. Look at tri lands, the, the tricycle lands that sell packs. Right. Look at when they have Mahdi Ho Ho or this or that where they're putting fetch lands or shock lands into the sets as yeah. means to popularize those sets or sell packs whatever the reason is right sure or if we go back to ravnica again we'll see shocks in standard right. uh maybe those reasons keep the the uh the specialty lands mm. out of foundations i i think sure what what do we have right now in standard the the surveil lands there's and then there's the ones that come into play that tap for a color and then if you control a basic of the two colors that the land could make, it'll make the other one. Oh, yeah. Those just came out in... Uh, whatever the fuck the last set was. I don't... Dusk, I, Duskmorn. I don't Duskmorn know. they yes. came out in, yeah. Yes. And we've got whatever lands that came out in Thunder Junction as well. It was the completion of some kind of... The Sackham and Draw Card one? I don't remember No, no, no it was, it was if you control two, we, they come untapped yeah, or that's something. A, yeah. That's so Assassin's we have, Creed I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, we have all of those in standard already, and I would wager that we see reprints of those or uh, completed full 10-card cycles, mm. or when they go back to the Ravnicas and the like, they'll, they're they going to give us reprints of the standard lands that we do need. Checks out. Right? Uh, we did get... Some really cool full art basics. Oh, here. man. I'm... Man, and I know that you wanted to talk about this, so I'm happy that you brought up lands. This is the... I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it right now. This is the smartest basic land move I that WotC has ever made. Dude, I was going to call this a smart set of basic lands, too. I was going to use the same word. Why do you think they're smart? Because they're... Most lands, you open them if you don't like the aesthetic for it. Mm -hmm. 
out they go. These ones aren't really aimed at an aesthetic. They're aimed at a character mm, or theme. We hit on the same thing. Yeah, and Exactly you, what I was talking about with the Planeswalkers. <laughs> I like this Planeswalker. I'm going to build a deck around it. Exactly. Right? We know somebody who has Oops All Lilianas. I used to have an Every Chandra deck. Uh, we know a few people in the Nation of Tiny Bones decks. We play with somebody yep. that plays Giada. We yep. got a couple of Johnny people. We lost right? a Giada on Sidewalk Slam once. Yeah, Mono like on a white five color Angel Aaron. And all those people, I, I shouldn't say all, but lots of those people that are doing this kind of thing. I know Fu Alex is doing it right now. He's trying to get all the Liliana lands. Yep. His Liliana deck. So let's go through it. We and these things are going to be in demand. I don't want Editor Joe to have to do all of the basics. If he wants to, he can. But uh, and and for the audio people, it doesn't matter. Yep. But we've got a planes with a Johnny on it. Yep. We've got a another planes, uh, and that was in. Uh, this looks like it's. Where's a Johnny from? Alara. Mm. He's a fucking planeswalker. He can go anywhere. Yeah, he doesn't. Uh, is from. this in Theros? That's what I would say. Theros or Alara? Sure. Because he's from Alara. Yeah. Uh, there's the new Capenna with Giada on a train. Yep. We've got. Zimone reading a book outside of a weird building. Uh, in Strixhaven. That's yep. her school. We've got Kaito sitting on uh, the ground in <laughs> Capenna. No, in Kamigawa. Yep. Neon Dynasty. We've got Liliana walking out of uh, to a, crypt. Tomb, a crypt after she probably banged some dead guy. Yeah. Uh, we've got Tiny Bones in a swamp stealing Who's, something. He's obviously stolen something. And he's probably in, like, what is it, the Ghost Moors from Lord of the Rings? Yeah, he's definitely in uh, the... Uh, the Dead Marshes. Yep, there we go. We've got Chandra in a mountain, probably in Kaladesh. Yep. We've got uh, your favorite guy, Kellen, riding guy, a horse. That guy sucks. Yep. We've got... Loot in a tree. Loot in a tree. And this one I don't like because you can't really see him up there. Yeah, it was hard to find. I showed it to to Sam when I was like, hey, like because that, that's the basic land that I got. Hey, find this guy. And then yeah. he's like, well, is this like a... Is it a monkey? Like, why is there a monkey? I don't understand. Yeah, we don't really know what he is. And then we've got Vivian in the forest in Ikoria with the big crystals, which are... Um, Ikoria. Ikoria iconography. Yes. So, Iconographic. Yes. Yes. So I, I like those. Really and I mean, cool. It, and if I was going to be the pessimist, like, oh, that means they're going to do a lot more loot shit to try and push the loot forest. But... Who cares? Say living. Somebody likes it. And yeah. if you don't like that forest... Guess what? There's 600 other forests you could play. Ask yeah. Lara. She's trying to collect one of every forest. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, frick, good luck. Yeah, good luck, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the the Tiny Bone Swamp and the Liliana Swamp. Those are my favorite two. Me too. Yeah. I think that the Ajani one is a very nice piece of art. I love dynamic skies. You know this. I do. I think the, uh, the best foil will be the Kaito Island. I concur. Yeah. Did we just agree on everything? Yes, we did. Oh, cool. Yes, we did. We all thought that we had the same thoughts on the full art basics. There we go. Should we talk reprints? We, we... I, Yeah, you know what? I've got the whole set up here, and it is... I've got to find it here. I've got to find it. Yeah. Organized to price, and it's got both reprints and new cards. Most expensive new non-legend at the time of this recording from Jumpstart yeah. is where it comes from. S uh, Scythe Cat Cub. Trample, landfall, plus one. And if this is the second time this ability is resolved this turn, double the number of plus ones on that creature. That could be an interesting card in Animar. Yep, that's a cool card. Landfall decks. Because uh, it puts the counter on target creature, not necessarily the cub. Yes. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, but it has trample in case you do put it on the cub, yeah. as you would maybe in, in Jumpstart. In Jumpstart, that's obviously what you're doing. Yes. Yep, yep. So that one's really good. Clocking in at a solid $29, $28. It's 338 Canadian. Yeah, if you use CCO Holiday promo code, though, you'll get a discount. Yeah, 338 Canadian. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, move that decimal place, right? Um, most expensive reprint in the set. Shocker of shockers. It's doubling season. Yeah. You heard about this card? Yeah. I hear that it maybe is good sometimes. Yeah. I think even producer Gary knows it's good. Yeah, it probably has. Yeah. Yes. Doubling season. Yep. That is the most expensive reprint. Most expensive main set new card is right next to doubling season in but thirsty conqueror. But thirsty conqueror. That isn't a legend. Yeah. Now this is exquisite blood, right? I I'm pretty or, sure. Or is it Exanguinate? No, it's not Exanguinate. What? Because Exanguinate, Exanguinate we've already got that on multiple different vampire legendary yeah. creatures. And Exquisite Blood is always the one that's expensive. And this yes. guy clocks in at $22 to $24. If you want his super awesome Japanese showcase printing in the Crackle Foil, yeah. 
207 dollars <laughs> again oh yikes parents if you open this card trade it into an lgs they'll be happy to give you store credit that you can spend on future product yes for your child to open and potentially open up more expensive cards yeah, just get another one or or cards that they'll actually play with and that you don't have to worry about damaging if they don't sleeve it right away yes Yes, as they are not want to do. Yeah, kids only sleeving shit. Yeah, Bloodthirsty Conqueror, five drop, five tie, five five flying, death touch, vampire, knight. Everything about that's relevant, vampire and knight. Yeah. And whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. Pretty so good. it combos with uh, the the blood bond combo. It uh, it goes in your life gain decks. It goes in your life drain decks. It goes in your vampire decks. Your knight decks. That's your one of death the, touch deck. That's one of those cards that just kind of goes in. It's like a, like a Bane Slayer Angel from back in the day. Mm, it this just, is Blood Slayer Angel. It just goes in the deck because it's fucking good. Yep. Yep. That's a good one. I, I'd like to see that card make a splash in standard. I bet it will. I, I mean, want it to. I think it's it might be good enough. It's got flying. It's got death touch. It essentially has lifelink. Like, that's a good card, man. Uh, yeah, that is essential. When it hits you, yeah. I will gain the life back. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good I, I like that card. And then everybody's talking about Sire of Seven Deaths. We talked about it a little bit earlier before. Mm. I don't, do you think we're going to see a lot of this in Commander? Mm, I, I hope was, so. I was thinking about it for my Eldrazi deck, and I didn't make the cut because it's not good enough. <laughs> I think that this goes in everybody's Eldrazi deck that just wants to play all of the biggest, baddest Eldrazis. They want to play all the Eldrazis with myth mythic set symbols, and this one's got First Strike, Vigilance, Menace, Trample, Lifelink, Reach, Ward 7, Ward pay seven life, and it's a seven seven for seven. This card is objectively powerful. Yes, and it's got the Eldrazi art. No matter which way you slice it, it's got cool art. Yeah. And yeah, I think that this is. You're not going to see it lots because there's like hundreds of Eldrazis you can pick from. Yeah. But it's going to go in the decks where everybody can get it and pay for it and play it and pay. 18 to $116 for it. <laughs> See, I love that there's that huge price range. Those, on it, right? those mana foils are crazy. As, again, as of this recording, things might have changed in the two weeks and since we you recorded know what? this. Fuck but it. I hope they stay that way. I hope they because do too. Because LGSs are going to crack product or people are going to trade in to get more sealed product. Mm -hmm. And LGSs can turn around and say, hey, I've got a, a, a super duper jerk off foil of Sire of Seven Jerks. And I'm going to sell it for $110. And that's somebody's paycheck and mortgage payment. And, and I keep thinking about that for, for LGSs and, and even stores like Fusion. They're, they're big, but they're not one of like the biggest stores in the mm -hmm. world, right? So when they open up a bunch of those mana foils, like the, the biggest boss daddy at Fusion, I bet you he's jumping for joy yeah. because he, he, he gets to make more money on them. And if the price differential, again, we're not MGG Finance, but we're doing it a little bit. If that differential stays like that where you can get a card for two three four bucks if you want to play it but then there's the hundred dollar super duper edition i think that's perfect i for, love that that's perfect for everybody because that sells packs that sells people who want to buy super duper foil singles like me mm -hmm. or it sells people who just want to get the card and like paint it or play it like you mm -hmm. or anybody else out there it actually caters to actual everyone yeah and how many card like how many sets have done that and how many times yep. has that happened it's very rare and you know what is uh, the other thing that i like about the the mana foils or the step and complete foils or or whatever it is that are kind of that sort of that five to ten x multiplier on a ten dollar card you're looking at a fifty or hundred dollar card for the most baller version and i don't want this to come off as smug or whatever if it's not for you but that price point for the most pimp in air quotes, the highest echelon of pimp version of that card is still obtainable. Yeah. Right? If a $100 card is obtainable. Okay. When you put a serial number on those cards and yeah. all of a sudden they jump up 10x again and it's in a $1,000 card mm -hmm. for nearly... Uh, for more than 99% of Magic players, that is not an obtainable price. Yeah. And then it becomes a lottery. And for the younger players who know that those exist and expect that they're going to get one, That's... because, you know, there's 25 different cards that all have serial numbers and there's a thousand of each or, or 500 of each. Yeah. Well, listen, there's freaking millions, millions of Magic cards out there. You're not going to get one of these you know, couple thousand that are out in circulation in the world. You're just yeah. not going to get one. Yeah. And when that kind of disparate value exists, mm -hmm. 
you're never going to be the person that has the pimpest version of something, yep. especially if it's a legendary creature and it's like the centerpiece of your deck. Get the step and complete Vornclex or get the yeah. mana foil, bloodthirsty butthole, whatever his name is, Conqueror, right? Um, and and be content that you have the hundred dollar version and you've got the most pimp version. And the coolest thing about the the hundred dollar being the the most pimp version is you can actually go out and you could hypothetically trade crack one pack and get a card that you can trade in for it. Whereas oh, if oh, the, yeah. like, for example, let's use, let's use Sol Ring as an example. Sure. Everybody can get a Sol Ring. Easy to get. Yeah. Let's say you want a, the rainbow foil Sol Ring, the buy a box promo from mm. this one, but you can't afford to buy a box. You could open a card that's worth 20 bucks and trade it to some guy who did buy a box. that doesn't need another Sol Ring. Yeah. If that's the one that you want. Yeah. But if the store has an invention one from Kaladesh, you just do not. You're, you're never gonna. You're, you're yeah. just not four figures for that, buddy. Right? Ooh. You're just not gonna get that, and you'll never have the super duper pimpest version of a card if that's important to you. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, I like the. I like the um, where we've settled on that. Mm-hmm. All I want is a foil one, yep. right? Like for my Lord of Tressorhorn deck, all I want is a foil one, and I'm good. Yep. Right. So if I want a foil soul ring, perfect. I'll go out and spend five dollars on a foil soul ring from. Um, Commander Legends or whatever, yeah. right? That one would look gray and be a taco shell. Yes. But at least I would have one, yes. right? And sort uh, of. I don't need the $30 foil from whatever set. I don't need the $50 foil from Fallout. Yeah. I don't need the $1,200 foil Kaladesh Invention. Correct. Oof. Double oof. Oof. Hey, what do you feel about, how do you feel about Twin Flame Tyrant? You want to talk about a jerk-off card? I have. Give it a read and then we'll talk about it. Dragon, 3-5, Flying. For red, red three, if a source you would control you would control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent, an opponent controls it deals that much double instead. I read all the right words, but kind of in the wrong order. Let, let me hit you with this: the damage doubler. That's uh, also a dragon. Of course, this is cool. It's a dragon. It's a damage doubler. But I'm kind of getting tired of those cards. Oh yeah, like, you think they're lazy? Yes. That's that's what I've heard of of damage doublers in red. Oh yeah. It's people who jerk off to it. It's fucking lazy. Yeah. And there's just, there's so many of them now, you know, like you could hypothetically go like doubler, 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 tap all my guys, doubler and kill somebody with a lightning bolt at some point. And I'm just, that's, that'd be funny. I have killed Lenny with a lightning bolt. Uh, I think I copied it, uh, three times. He took 12. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, who was it? Someone was playing Obosh and they lightning bolted somebody for like seventy or something. It was crazy. Didn't didn't Mac lightning Mac. bolt somebody for eighty six? Yeah, something? that was yeah Mac or there whatever whatever the math is ninety two whatever a multiple of three is. Yeah, it was insane. But the the point is, I think that cards like this are it's going to be a chase mythic because it's a mythic that's really good that mm-hmm. people are going to want for standard. That also happens to be a dragon. That also happens to be a dragon. They did that on purpose. It's, I don't know. Just I'd rather just play City on Fire. Because it triples my damage. Look at that freaking Japanese showcase crackle foil, so though, dude. Cool. Come on. Yeah. There's there's no coming back from that. That's that, that's the best. That's a banner that you would hang in your house. Yes. Right? And, okay, yeah, we can get this card for about 15 bucks. Sure. And in a few weeks, we're going to be able to get this card for 8 to $10. Yep. Fine. Perfect. Chase Mythic Damage Doubler. I would expect it to cost that much. Correct. I would say, oh, fuck, I'm going to pick that up if it didn't cost that much. Yeah. But if I open up the freaking crackle foil, mother ass, three honey. <laughs> Who three bills? Wow. Whee! Oh, man, that's cool. And again, we, we can't say enough about how, how we love that and how exciting it is to open that yes. kind of stuff when we do open flippy. Yeah. Do you think we opened any in Calgary? You know, I'll bet you we did. I'll bet you. I hope we did. I'll bet you we opened either a crackle foil or some kind. Because there's enough like premium stuff just kind of hidden in here, right? Yeah. That somebody is going to open something and everybody is going to be excited. And that's, who's, that's cool. Whose box did it come out of, do you think? J-Rock Confarties. You think, okay, Jared bought the box. Yeah. And who had the sleeves? Guaranteed sleeves? Keel. Keel had the sleeves. Yeah, Keel brought Keel sleeves. Keel had the sleeves. He had. He was like uh, quick draw Kellen. Sleeves. Yeah. Yeah, I opened the card in my pack and just threw it on the floor, and then yeah. Keel came and picked it up, and put it in his sleeve, yeah. and then yeah, put it yeah, back yeah. on the floor because no, he's a good team no, player. No, no, what we did was uh, the table was wobbling, so we said, "Brando, open your pack first. Use all of your cards to stop the table from wobbling." <laughs> <laughs> and then we played open flipping. You sat there like this. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> 
So All right. we're getting a little long in the tooth. Yeah, I don't know how long we are, but that's how we feel generally about MTG Foundations. How are we got for time there, producer Gary? 54. We're Look right on time. Right on time. Final thought of the day Final... on, on foundations. If you have thoughts, share them with us in the comments below. We'd love to hear how you're feeling about this. The first super duper core set establishing a floor for magic across all formats until almost 2030. That's a long time. Yeah, look at Eidolon of Astral Winds. Say it right. A Eidolon of Asshole Winds. Uh, yeah. Jesus. Look at that. That's going to be a mega cool foil. Whenever Eidolon of Asshole Winds or another enchantment you control enters, choose target creature you control until end of turn. It has base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, and gain flying turns things into angels cool i'm looking at the tile and space mashup freaking cool man Neat. see and that's the kind of thing you're going to look you're going to find something you like and that's what makes this set so good i think we can all agree on that if you have deck ideas or anything else hit us up on discord send them to us through email commander at gmail.com we're going to do a couple of deck texts in the next couple of weeks unless of course spoiler season has started for skylanders slash magic and then we'll probably talk about that. But we're not going to know until next week when we make it to the next exciting episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme!